Galileo Galilei. Most people simply call him Galileo. He was one of the most significant people in the history of science. Presented by, hey, that's me, Godier Morrison. Galileo Galilei is born in Pisa on February 15, 1564. He lived at a crucial crossroads in time when different strands of thought met and clashed. These were natural philosophy based on Aristotle's incorrect ideas, the belief of the Catholic Church, and evidence-based scientific research, as psychology was not yet defined as a science. The beginning of Galileo and the Galilei family. Born first to his parents, Vincenzo Galilei of Florence, a music teacher, and Giulia Degli Amanetti of Pescia, the eldest of five other siblings, two brothers and four sisters. Three of Galileo's five siblings survived infancy. In 1591, Galileo's father died at the age of 70. Galileo becomes the primary financial provider for his family, which includes his mother, his married sister Virginia, whose dowry requires regular payments, his 16-year-old brother Michelangelo, and his unmarried sister Livia. Three siblings ultimately die during their infancy. His mother dies September 1620 at the age of 82, which is outstanding for the period. Galileo's love and children. At the age of 36, Galileo begins a relationship with 22-year-old Marina Gamba of Venice. In August 1600, Galileo Marina, Gamba's first daughter, Virginia, is born in August 1601, Livia, Galileo Marina, Gamba's second child, is born almost one year after her sister. Was that as far as I needed in to go? In August 1607, Marina Gamba gives birth to Vincenzo, Galileo's only son. 1613, Virginia and Livia Galilei 
Galileo's daughters, enter the covenant of San Mateo in our century, they both become nuns. Marina Gamba dies in February 1619. She and Galileo were never married and never lived under the same roof. Galileo's daughter, Virginia, known as Sister Maria Celeste, dies in the covenant of San Mateo in April 1634. On the left here, it shows Galileo's three children, his son and his two daughters. Galileo wanted to become a priest, but his father pushed him to be better than the seller of cloths, making little to no money, resolving Galileo upon a scientific career. Galileo begins his studies in September 1581 at the University of Pisa, where he then studies medicine and mathematics. Though he is a diligent medical student, mostly to satisfy his father's wish that he become a doctor, Galileo prefers mathematics. At the age of 21, 1585, Galileo leaves the University of Pisa without a degree after four years of study, spending the next four years giving private lessons in mathematics in Florence and Siena. The Early Education of Galileo In 1579, Galileo begins his studies in Greek, Latin, and logic at the Benedictine Monastery of Santa Maria di Vallombrosa and considers becoming a monk. Galileo later changes his mind after his father expresses displeasure. In 1581, Galileo made his first discovery at 18 years old while performing his devotions in the Cathedral of Pisa. He watched an attendant light a bronze lamp, which still hangs today, by the way. The Early Education of Galileo In 1579, Galileo begins his studies in Greek, Latin, and logic at the Benedictine Monastery of Santa Maria di Vallombrosa and considers becoming a monk. Galileo later changes his mind after his father expresses
Galileo's Life Accomplishments and Henri Self. In 1587, Galileo takes a teaching position at the University of Pisa. He refuses to wear the standard Academia Regalia, a black robe, dismissing the sartorial tradition as pretentious and cumbersome. University officials repeatedly impose fines on him for his transgression. Galileo's Henri-ness was not surprising, as Galileo did have the nickname the Wrangler due to his attitude and disrespect towards authority. Much like us all, we will only bend our will to authority if it is justified. Galileo's life accomplishments regarding his career. In December of 1592, Galileo becomes chair of the mathematics department at the University of Padua in the Republic of Venice. He gives lectures on geometry and astronomy in addition to private lessons in Euclid, cosmography, and other subjects. Galileo has a close encounter with death. In the early summer of 1593, Galileo contracted an illness, which nearly proved fatal. Luckily, he survived because he was able to create some of history's modern inventions, some of which we still use today. The year 1593, forerunner to the modern thermometer. A thermoscope is a device that shows changes in temperature. It consists of a tube in which the liquid rises and falls as the temperature changes. The modern thermometer gradually evolved from the thermoscope. The hydrostatic balance, based on the Archimedes principle weighing precious metals in air and then in water to determine their purity, was common practice among jewelers in Europe. In 1586, at the age of 22, Galileo developed a better method, which he described in a treatise titled La Balanceta, the little balance. In Galileo's hydrostatic balance, the part of the arm which the counterweight was hung was wrapped with a metal wire. The amount by which the counterweight had to be moved when weighing in water could then be determined very accurately by counting the number of turns of the wire. Thus, the proportion of metals like gold to silver in the object could be read off directly.
The compass. In 1597, Galileo invents a geometric and military compass, which has a commercial use as a pocket calculator. He hires a full-time instrument maker to mass produce the compass and publishes a companion manual to the instrument. He even offers private lessons on its use. It became the major calculating instrument in use from the end of the 16th century to the, till the 19th century. The invention of the pendulum in 1602. Galileo is the first known person to study in detail the properties of pendulums. Galileo conducts experiments with a pendulum on the measurement of time increments. He explains his findings in a letter to Santorio Santorio, a doctor friend in Venice who then successfully uses the pendulum to measure his patient's pulses. Galileo took many notes indicating that the swing of the pendulum usually takes or nearly always takes the same amount of time, independent of amplitude. Thus, a pendulum is isochronous. The oscillation period of a given pendulum is nearly constant regardless of the angle of its swing. Did you know the pendulum clock later became the world's standard timekeeper till the 1930s? Many of our grandparents still have some of these in their homes as display pieces. One invention commonly given credit to Galileo was not an invention of his own. He merely improved on it. That was the telescope. In 1609, astronomers Maislin and Galileo, being one of the first in 1604, noticed a new star appear in the constellation. This may be one of the reasons why Galileo took an early interest in the stars. In May, Galileo learns of the invention of the telescopic lens in the Netherlands, which can be used to see objects at a distance Within a month, he creates his own three-powered telescope. Throughout the summer and fall of 1609, Galileo continues to work on his telescope and begins to observe the night sky through it. He presents an eight-powered telescope to the Senate in Venice and is awarded the tenure at the University of Padua. From November 30th to December 19th, Galileo observes the moon through his new telescope. He was one of the first Europeans to observe the phenomena of sunspots and 
the first to discover the moon had craters, mountains, and valleys, and was not a translucent and perfect sphere as supposed until then. Among his discoveries, Galileo discovers the phases of Venus. The first known observations of the planetary phases of Venus were done by a Galileo with his telescope in the late 1610. The discovery of the Venus's phases were monumental as it essentially ruled out Ptolemy's geocentric model which placed the Earth at the center of the universe. The discovering of the four largest moons of Jupiter in January 1610, Galileo Galilei discovered the four largest moons of Jupiter. Though Galileo named the four moons the Medicean stars in honor of his future patron, Cosimo del Medici, and his three brothers, they were later renamed the Galilean moons in his honor. Galileo's observations of the satellites of Jupiter caused a revolution in astronomy as it contradicted the principles of Aristotle which held that all heavenly bodies should circle the earth. Galileo's book, The Assayer. In October 1623, Galileo's book, The Assayer, was published. Galileo wrote that mathematics is the language of science and the only means to achieve lasting truth in physics. The Assayer is considered one of the pioneering works of the scientific method. It attacked theories based on Aristotle's authority and promoted experimentation and mathematical formulation of scientific ideas. In 1611, while in Rome, Jesuit mathematicians at the Collegio Romano certified Galileo's celestial discoveries, which include Saturn, sunspots, and the satellites of Jupiter, among other things. In 1613, Galileo publishes his sunspot letters. Galileo publishes bodies that stay in hot water or move within it in Florence in 1612. You didn't do the rest. So, yeah. I mention again that in January 1619, Galileo writes about his theory of the tides, arguing that it proves the movement of the earth and the central position of the sun. He addresses his writing to Cardinal Alessandro Orsini. That same year, Pope Paul V orders Robert Cardinal Bellarmine, the so-called hammer of the heretics, to warn Galileo against defending Copernican theory.
The Copernican Theory. In 1624, Galileo travels to Rome, where he has audiences with Pope Urban VIII and several cardinals. The Pope grants Galileo permission to address Copernican theory in his writing on the condition that he only lend it the weight of an hypothesis. Galileo finished his work in April 1630 for Dialogue Concerning Two Chief World Systems, which includes his treatise on the tides, and it is published two years later. Pope Urban VIII suspends distribution of Galileo's dialogue and appoints a commission to examine the book. The case is referred to the Inquisition, and Galileo is summoned from Florence to Rome. Dialogue Concerning the Two Chief World Systems The basic principle of relativity that the law of physics are the same in any system moving at a constant velocity, known as the Galilean invariance, provided the basic framework for Newton's laws of motion and is central to Einstein's special theory of relativity. Bomb, bomb, bomb. The Inquisition. In April 1633, the Inquisition formally interrogates Galileo, who has been bomb, detained bomb. in the building of Inquisition for several weeks. Galileo agrees to plead guilty in order to receive a lenient sentence. On April 30th, he confesses that he advocated Copernican theory too vigorously in the dialogue. He agrees to modify his opinions in his next work. In June, the Pope orders Galileo imprisoned indefinitely under house arrest. Galileo makes his way back to his villa in Arcetri near Florence, where he'll spend the remainder of his life under house arrest. Galileo begins working on his discourse concerning two new sciences. Galileo, in failing health for several years, loses his eyesight. He petitions the Inquisition in 1637 to be freed for medical reasons. His request is denied, but in March, the Inquisition gives Galileo permission to attend religious services on holidays. Galileo's final book, The Discourses and Mathematical Demonstrations Relating to New Sciences, publishes in 1638. It summarizes his work on the two sciences, now known as kinematics and the strength of materials. It includes his law of failing bodies, acceleration of falling bodies was constant and independent of mass, and his studies of parabolic path of projectiles, a combination of two motions, constant speed and uniform acceleration. Galileo's Final Years. In 1638, Discourse Concerning Two New Sciences is published in Holland. In 1641, Galileo receives a pendulum-controlled clock as a gift. 1642, Galileo dies in R.C. Tree on January 8th. Isaac Newton is born in England on December 25th. A few things you maybe didn't know about Galileo. One, he was artsy. He played the lute, organ, and two other instruments, but the lute was by far his favorite. 
His favorite pastime was the construction of toy machines. Interestingly enough, Newton would show similar precocity for things mechanical. As a lad, he showed considerable skill in drawing and painting. In later life, he used to tell his friends that had circumstances permitted him to choose his own career, he would have elected to become a painter. I had many references when I was researching Galileo. He's quite an intriguing and interesting person. One of my favorite references were pbs.org as well as the Library of Congress. Each provided adequate information and it was never ending. I hope I incited someone to find an interest in Galileo or any historical figure who would just like to know more about the world and how it had formed.